right, again, good afternoon or morning, everybody, depending where you're located. We are going to get started. It's 102. Um, we have around 11 participants right now. We'll, hopefully, people will keep trickling in, but we'll get started to be respectful of everybody's time. The topic of today's Open Office Hour series on Netflix is Suite Analytics Workbook. Uh, I'm going to start by talking about the, uh, the, the functionality as compared to the couple of other webinars we've had in the last couple of weeks and then jump straight to the application and to the questions and answers we have. So, so far we've covered uh, three, three of the four components of what NetSuite calls Suite Analytics. Uh, the first one we talked about was reports. We specifically talked about financial reports, uh, but there's other reports that we mentioned that session as well. And reports are a point in time data snapshot. So they, they always are as of a specific date or between dates or a range of time. Uh, we also talked about safe searches last week, um, two weeks ago, sorry, where we talked about you know, the, the power of safe searches. And safe searches are criteria-based queries that are presented in a um, tabular way and, and can be filtered, can be uh, uh, dissected in a couple of different ways, but they're very, very static as uh, for based on the criteria that you have and they're more exportable to Excel than something you can grab. And then we also talked about KPIs last week when we talked about dashboards and, and the KPIs are uh, measurements or counts of a specific metric, dollars, units, quantities, etc., that you can display on your dashboard. And there are some uh, KPIs that you can graph over time where they're time-based, uh, but they're very, very uh, specific measurements. The fourth uh, component of Sweden Analytics is what we're gonna talk about today, which are a newer feature. It's about one year old, so it's still in development, uh, still improving rapidly with NetSuite, which is workbooks. And it's the ability to create queries and visualization of those queries within a single tool and within NetSuite. And a clarification here, the workbooks are not meant to be yet a replacement of something like a Power BI or, you know, uh, uh, other uh, power a data warehouse of uh, systems, host analytics, adaptive insights, et cetera, uh, that are connected to NetSuite, but they give you a lot of information and why analysis within, within NetSuite. An additional comparison between the searches, reports, and workbooks is that you know uh, searches and reports can be scheduled and be emailed. Uh, it supp searches support some highlighting where reports only you can only do it for financial reports. Uh, and in order to be able to do pivoting in searches, you have to have advanced SQL knowledge. Um, Next, we play with the concept of pivot reports within searches a couple of years ago, and then they pivoted uh, to the workbooks uh, last year. And workbooks, you can schedule them, uh, you can highlight them, but you can do multi-level joins. You can basically go more than one uh, join away. Uh, you can do that in searches. You can only go one, one uh, degree of separation. Uh, you can do pivoting, visualizations, and it uses a new data analytics source um, that has been optimized for workbooks, but it's still not applicable for searches and reports. So NetSuite in the background has a couple of different data, what they call data sources that they're working with. And eventually probably will migrate everything to the analytics data source, but that might, that might take several releases to, to, to go through. So let's move to the application itself. Um, so it's all gonna be within NetSuite. Before I jump in, I wanna share one piece of knowledge that some of you may know. Um, there is something called the schema browser. Um, and I will post this in the uh, chat window. Um, I think I can do that. Um, we're in the Q&A window, but uh, or if not, I'll send it later. But the idea that this is um, the analytics browser is what NetSuite uses to draw the information for the Suite Analytics workbooks. Uh, this is a newer browser or a newer schema that they uh, published as of the last two releases. And it's used not only for the Suite Analytics browser or workbook, but it's also something that can be used for 
connections via ODBC. So some of our clients and some of you included may be using something like a host analytics, maybe using something like a Power BI where you connect via Suite Analytics Connect, a module that NetSuite provides to connect directly to the database. Pre prior to 2019.1, you would connect to the Connect browser. And this would tell you all the records that you have in NetSuite, what the name, the type, and the characteristics of those records. Uh, you, know, you can look for them alphabetically here. As of 19.1, uh, you can connect to the analytics browser, which is a richer analytics data source uh, to connect. So even if you're connected to, to the connect browser, you can switch to the analytics browser as of 19.1. Obviously that might require some effort on your analytics implementation, but it provides you uh, a lot more information and that is the database or the data source that NetSuite is uh, continuously working on. Uh, from now on to the future. Uh, additionally, here you have a couple of different browsers. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with them. One is the schema browser, which basically is what you can use to connect to SOAP uh, using via, via SOAP web services, uh, not rested, but SOAP. So if you're using that uh, connection web services uh, protocol, then the schema browser shows you all the fields that are available for SOAP web services. And the records browser, it was available for scripting. It's all the fields that are available for scripting in, within NetSuite. Again, you can look at them by, by alphabetically, uh, by the transaction or record type you're looking for. So just a little bit of nugget of information that may be useful for those of you that are scripting, integrating, or mostly using uh, uh, Suite Analytics Connect. Uh, one of the questions that we have was, you know, how, how does this, the workbooks useful for connecting the ODBC. And the workbooks directly are not useful, or you can connect to the workbook directly, but what you're connecting is to the data source, which is this analytics browser, and that's the same data source that the workbooks use within NetSuite. Right, now moving on to, to the analytics, uh, uh, student analytics workbook uh, proper. It, uh, the student analytics workbook permission comes by default uh, in all new implementations. Uh, those of you that don't have a newer implementation may not see this analytics tab on your, on your uh, NetSuite instance. Uh, this is where the analytics are gonna be. And in order to make this visible, uh, basically uh, all you have to do is give the users permission to that, uh, to that functionality. And the way you do that, uh, I'm just going to go to a specific role here. Uh, if you go to the role, if you are an administrator or you have an administrator, within the uh, role itself, you'll need to provide access uh, to, to, to have them be able to view the analytics workbook. And, and that's going to be on their reports. And you'll see the Sweden Analytics Workbook permission here that you can add if you don't have it uh, available in at that specific role yet. Uh, and the, there's only one permission level, which is edit. Anybody that has access to the student analytics workbook can edit uh, that specific workbook. Uh, uh, there's no view only access to that. Uh, there is a second permission that it's called the analytics administrator permission. And the analytics administrator permission, which only comes in full mode, is something that you would need to be able to override a workbook or share it. Um, oh, sorry, override it. Share you can do with the other. So if you're if you if you have the edit permission, you'll be able to change a workbook. But if it's not yours, you won't be able to write over it. You basically create a new copy of the workbook. Very similar to what you can do with 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 uh, safe searches, where you can you can perform it but you may be able to edit them. You may not be able to publish them if you're not the owner's similar permissions. Uh, the third thing that I should have mentioned initially is that if you, if you are newer to, uh, if you've been in NetSuite for a while, the Sweden Analytics permission or, or, or feature is gonna be on your company enable features section. And you'll see it under analytics the student analytics workbook will be will be here. So if you don't have that enabled, it's a free it's a free functionality 
it comes with every account, but sometimes it will have to be enabled and then those permissions will have to be granted uh, to the users. So that's sort of the setup piece. There's not a lot more setup to be done, just like searches and reports. It, it just turn it on and start using it uh, with the right permissions. Uh, the only thing that, that uh, to point out is each user uh, the, uh, on your set preference home dashboard, the localization and formatting preferences will play into the workbook. So selecting your right time zone, uh, selecting your right formats, this will display, this will show how the information in the workbooks would display for you. Uh, it's again, it's by person. Uh, this come defaulted, but you can select with your data formats, your date formats, your number formats, etc. And then your days of the week, your language, et cetera, all that is something that you set up as a personal preference. So those would have to be set up, but that's the additional setup that you would have to do as an individual to be able to see it the way you want to see it. Um, so now let's get into it. Um, get, a, get a little bit uh, technical uh, here uh, from, from a concepts perspective before we get into actually playing with the workbooks. Uh, there are two components of the workbooks. Um, you have workbooks and you have the what's called the data sets. Um, the navigation here is pretty simple. The workbooks, you'll be able to look at your workbook or all workbooks if you have whatever you have access to. You can see your workbooks, the ones that you've created or have been shared with you. Um, the share with me, only the things that have been shared with you. Uh, employee workbooks are, are workbooks that are created by employees and not by the system. And then you have the templates, which are predefined workbooks that come with your with your NetSuite edition. Uh, so you may have already a starting point to build workbooks and these templates are templates. You won't be able to save over them. You will have to do a save as if you use them and, and make changes to them. So these are things that come already in the system and, and NetSuite is publishing more and more workbooks with every release but you have the underlying data in the data sets uh, to create the workbooks. So a data set is basically a, um, a, a view of what you've defined you wanna see eventually in a workbook. So there are some, again, you have the same navigation. There are template data sets that come in the system and then there's your data sets shared with you, et cetera, uh, that you can, you can see. So I'll look at a template and a, and, the, and a data set, like I said, it's gonna be information that has been predefined, like when you start a safe search to have some equivalency uh, of what you want to be, then be able to play around in a workbook or create a workbook for. The data sets themselves are not graphical or, um, or, or you cannot do pivot tables or charge with them, they're just data. So the data sets always start with a transaction type, and we'll get into that in a second, and then you define what you want to see in that data set here on the right by dragging and dropping or double clicking. So this data set has some information. This is a transaction detailed data set that, you know, it has dates, internal IDs, transaction and transaction types. And this is built from this specific record type that has been created for that data set. Um, once you select a, a data or, or a transaction type, you can see on the right the fields that are available for that data set and highlighted in blue and at the top, the ones that you've selected. So in this data set, if I wanna add something like, for example, you know, I'm just gonna add approval status um, here, I can drag and drop it to where I want it to go, or I can just double click it. When I double click it, it's going to go up, uh, it's gonna be added, uh, as the last row of my um, last column, sorry, and it's going to be highlighted in blue. So now I've added it. I can add filters. So from the data set itself, I can click on the field and I can sort it. Uh, I can add a specific, I can move it here by dragging and dropping, or I can remove that column and I can add filters as well uh, by dragging filters here. Here, these are the filters that I have. Once I've created that data set, uh, this is the information that I'm gonna be able to use in the workbook. There's a lot more information available, but this is the information that will be available for a workbook. So just like with the safe search or a report, you have to define what you wanna to see to be able to then see it 
in, in the system, right? It, it, you don't get in one place access to the entire database in a sort of all-encompassing data set. There are uh, complexities to that. You want to avoid duplication of data. You want to avoid redundancy in the data. So you have to design what you want to do. Just like if you were building a, a, a data warehouse with certain views and, and queries, right? So what this is doing is creating the queries to the database for you, but you have to define which queries you want to do. So once you have defined you want to do, you, you do, you do a save as, and I'm just going to do, uh, give it a name and you can give it a sample. You can say, this is, I'm showing internal ID, uh, type, uh, and filtered by X and Y. So you can define that so everybody can see what this is and save it. And, and now that I've saved it, if I go back to my um, data sets here and I do my data sets, there's going to be uh, a, a, a transaction type data set here. Sample, transaction data set. Um, so that's how you create a data set or modify an existing data set, you can also create a new data set. So when you create a new data set, like I said, you have to define a specific record type. So if I wanna create a transaction, uh, a transaction data set that's unique to me, it's not, I cannot use one of the templates in the system, this gives you access to the entire, to the entire database. So I'll start with the transaction. You have to select one record type and you'll see here on the left that it adds all the fields related or not to that specific data set uh, or, or record type. So this is where you can, just like with the safe search, start searching the fields or the information that you'll want to add. And again, just drag and drop it here. So in this case, you know, it automatically brings some of the data that it thinks is relevant. I can move it, I can rename it, um, I can remove that column, um, you know, I can sort it, do all the, the, the things that I want to be able to have it set up. I can drag a field for the specific, you know, uh, as a criteria. So I can drag it from, from, from here to the data set and I can select uh, any of the, there's no values here, but I could select a specific filter here um, and go from there and eventually create that data set. This is gonna be, important because this data set is what eventually is going to be the basis for that for that specific workflow. So you, uh, and you can create as many data sets as you want. Uh, the fields here are based on your field ID. So that's the difference between here and the safe searches. So whatever field you wanna add is gonna be based on your field IDs. Uh, it is a little bit, um, you have to know what you're looking for and you can do searches here. If I wanna do an item, for example, is gonna show you the items for that specific record and any field everywhere else. If you wanna do more results, you just click here on more results and then you, know, you define what you are, are looking for. You'll see the, the, the field type here or where the, what record it's coming from and the field that you have available here um, to add. So I can, for example, I can add you know, shipping item and you know, it's, I add it here to the right and now if there's data, it's going to refresh and it's going to populate the data immediately. Uh, so once I finish that, I can just save, you know, I can save this. This is the first time transaction data set uh, office hours number two, and I can give it a name, uh, sample description here. Save that here. There is no easy way to navigate back to the menu. so. Uh, you would have to just come here to the analytics and look at the data sets. And if I look at my data sets, I have uh, my data set here. And from that data set, I could create a workbook. So I can come here and look at the details of the data set. You know, this is my description, the criteria. There's no criteria here. What fields are added here? This is my description that I can modify right here in line if I want to. Uh, it has a script ID. Uh, you can change it as well who the owner is. If, you're, if you have that analyst administrator permission, you can change who the owner is. Or if you're the owner, you can assign the owner to be somebody else. Shows you what the root record is. So I started with a transaction, when it was open, when it was last modified. And here on the right, I can do a couple of things. I can create a workbook or 
go back to that, I can share it. So I can take that data set and say, well, I want to share it. Uh, this is the data set that I want to share here. And I can define what roles I share it with by just selecting the roles that I want to share it with and clicking or double clicking on the role. Or I can select it with their specific, specific employees. So I can do both, right? Uh, and then once I share it, those roles and employees will have access to that data set and they can create their own workbooks from that data set. Um, it's important to, to know that they, the roles still have restrictions to data. So if they don't have access to specific data within the data set, they won't be able to look at that data set completely. So you have to be able to match the role permissions to the data set in order for them to be able to look at the underlying data. So once I create a data set, I'm gonna create it. This is a transaction data set. Uh, I can create, like I said, I can create a workbook and I, I'll do it this way first by just coming here and, and saying create the workbook. And when you create a workbook, it's gonna give, you have to have at least one visualization. So this is the workbook process and I have to create a table, a pivot table or a chart. So I'm gonna create a table and, and then once I create a table, I can start adding fields. So I wanna have a date, and I, I want to have uh, an entity. It shows me if it's a parent. Let me step back for a second. Here on, on the fields, it tells you the type of field it is. So you, have, you see this icon, so I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. But there's a date field, has a date icon. Uh, a document number, is, it's text. If it has a hierarchy, it means that it's a hierarchical. Uh, field and this field, this one on the right here, which next to the hierarchy is what Netsuite calls a polymorphic field that has multiple multiple values in it, or you can have multiple fields in it. Uh, you have a numeric field and, and any other fields. If it's a yes, no field, it will have sort of a, a radio button. So you'll have uh, the, the field type here. Once you've defined, again, you understand that part. Uh, if I go back and I add entity, because an entity is a hierarchical field, it will show me, it will tell me, do you want the child level only or do you want the hierarchy? So if I have a parent-child relationship in entities, uh, then it will show me the parent call of the child. Uh, if you just want the child, it will just give you the child name. Um, and you can set not to show this again. Uh, so I'm gonna just do the child. You can see that as I'm adding fields, it's, uh, it's populating, it's gonna be populating that table. Uh, I can add the transaction and I can add a transaction type, right? And as I, as if this is an entity, it will be here. So for example, once I have, because I have all my transactions, I have no criteria in my data set. So for example, I didn't create a data set of only sales orders, it's showing me every transaction. Uh, I would, I, I can, but I can filter this on the workbook itself. So I can say, well, I can right click on this, or I can click on this buttons here and select filter and say, uh, no transaction, when I say transaction type, add a filter, and I can say, show me, uh, it's gonna show me all the, all the transaction types. I only wanna look at sales orders. So if I click apply, you see it's gonna filter that, and because I have a sales order, now there's an entity, which is my customer. Um, uh, and then I can you know, change the size of this, drag and drop it. Uh, and then I'm gonna add the total amount, right? I'm gonna add the total amount to the right, um, and it's going to filter. So it's going to automatically show me what I have. So in this case, I have 740, 748 lines here. It's filtered by source order. I can remove that filter by clicking it here, or I can edit that filter by coming here and editing the filter here. Um, I, can move trans I can move things around if I want to. Uh, and one, once I do that, I can double click on the table name and I can just give it a name, you know, uh, transaction, transaction. So I'm just gonna call it transactions list, or sales orders list. Um, a couple of things that I can do as well here. In, in, in any amount field, you'll have the option of setting the currency. So sometimes you'll be able to convert it, sometimes you'll be able to consolidate it depending on the field. In this case, um, um, this is a, uh, a total amount, so I would be able to convert it only. 
And what that means is I can have it show me the display, the, 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 the original amount or currency, or I can convert it. So I have, if I have uh, uh, transactions in multiple currencies, I can say, show me the amount, everything in, in the original currency, dollars, Canadian dollars, et cetera, or I can say in this, or to convert it, and in the conversion options, I can say, show me everything in Canadian dollars, for example. So I can apply that, and it's going to update that to Canadian dollars. Or I can convert it to, in this case, so we can see the currency to euros, the different currency sign, and I'm going to convert it to euros, and you can see now that this is all in euros, regardless of the currency of the underlying data. When you are looking at GL data, you can use consolidate because GL data will be consolidated at the GL level. This is transaction data or line level data, you'll be able to convert it. So it's easier to visualize and then eventually graph. So in this case, I'm gonna show it in the, this original currency and then I have my data. So that's one thing you can do very easily. The second thing is I can create a, a um, let's see, a, a, a few questions here that we'll answer. Um, you, you have the option of creating a pivot table and the pivot table is just going to be yeah, a, a pivot table. So if I wanna see, for example, uh, my rows B transactions, transaction type, uh, I wanna see my columns, I wanna leave my columns empty and I wanna see uh, transactions in, in, as my counter here. So it's gonna show me the count of transactions. I can do this and I do have to refresh the, the pivots and charts. You have to do this refresh once you add the information. And it's gonna show me you know, a pivot table of you know, count by, by transaction. I can add, you know, I could add date to my columns, for example. And I can say, you know, I want the date to be uh, not by month, but by quarter. And I refresh this. And it's going to show me on my headers the transaction count by quarter based on the dates that I have available in this specific, in this specific uh, data set. Again, the data set is the underlying data. I can, I can do some filtering. Um, and I can do uh, sorting if I want to. Uh, but this is basically the, the, the data the, the data that I'll be able to see. I can add things. Here you have options. For example, I can add totals. So if I wanted to add totals to the rows, I can say add totals to the bottom. If I wanted to add totals to the column, you'll see that it's not letting me just because the, the totals are not, uh, um, I, 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 it doesn't let me do it right now. Uh, so I, once it refreshes that, you'll see that at the bottom, I have the total transaction count here. Um, you can filter, like I said, you can filter based on here. You can also filter based on here. I can say, you know, I can filter by, uh, transaction count, I can filter by type, I can show grand total, etc. So I can rename this. So I can say I don't want it to be trans just type, I want to say transaction type. And you know, it will rename just for my pivot table, it'll be, it will rename that is refreshing here, and you know, you'll be able to still see that here. Um, I can, I can. As well, I can name this so I can say, you know, count uh, transaction type by, by quarter, for example. Um, I'll show you in a second how, the, how to add this to your dashboard, but I wanted to show you how to create that workbook or how to create that pivot chart. Uh, and then the last one, you can create additional pivots. So you, there's no limit to the pivots. Obviously, there's a limit to what you can display here, but you'll have an arrow here to keep navigating. Uh, uh, and now, so I'm going to add a, a chart. And the chart is just going to be that. So if I want to do a chart, I might say, you know, I want to look at my axis and, and my uh, what x axis I'm going to put a date. And I don't want to do a date. Only I want to do a date by date and quarter. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to say, show me month and quarter. And in my measures, I want to be able to see um, transactions. So I refresh this. And this is a column chart. It's going to show me, you know, the uh, a, a chart of transaction 
types uh, of, of total of count of transaction. Uh, if I wanted to do by type, I could add this to my series here, uh, and then it was going to show me something different when it's going to show me count by trans each column is going to be a different transaction type. Again, I can filter and I can say only uh, filter type and I want to see only bill payments and bills, for example. And I don't want to see it by, it's too, too full. I don't want to see it by month anymore. I only want to see it by year. So it's going to show me by year that 2019, 2020, the count of bills and bill types. Once I've defined what I want to see, I can see my filters here. I can see my data. I could give the title a name. So this is a you know count of bill related transactions. And I could give it a subtitle, uh, bill, bills and bill payments. And I can give my uh, my access names. So I can give this and say transaction, I can see it here. And I can, to my Y axis, I can say count. Uh, once I save this, I was gonna give it, you know, office hours, transaction workbook. And I can give it a description. I can save it. Uh, you're gonna get this that it's been saved. This is a new, you'll start seeing more of this in the future with Netsuite where it's, it's synchronizing, it, it's saving things asynchronously. Basically, you know, it does it faster, it does it in the background. So you don't see that sort of like uh, things, uh, the, the browser refreshing. And then um, I do have to refresh this because charts and, and um, um, pivot tables you have to refresh but now I see that my that my data is there and it's showing so now I can you know I can say uh, count of bills by year you give it a name whatever name you want once I have this I can I can share this so I can say you know I'm gonna share this with my uh, payable with my payable roles I have two roles for payables here I want them to be able to to look at this is it's, it's sharing it's been shared with them and they can change it unless they have they can change it but they can do a save as uh, because they don't have the analyst the analyst administrator uh, role um, so once you um, have created that uh, you can go to your dashboard so I'm just going to go to my transactions dashboard here um, and see how this can get displayed and, and then we'll come back and do a couple more examples and look at the questions. So on my transactions, I have, you know, let's see if I have the ability to add here. So if I come to personalize, we talked about this uh, last week when we talked about dashboards. Yes, I have 10 dashboards, 10 analytics that I can add. So I'm gonna select one, close this, and it's gonna give me my portlet. And here I can select, you know, uh, what I wanna see. So I wanna look, it, it lets you filter. Do I wanna pivot or a chart? I'm gonna look at a chart. And it gives you the name of the different workbooks that you have here. Um, and here's my uh, office hours, trans yeah, office hours, where is my new, um, where's my, see if this is the one. It didn't give me the name, so that's I'll have to look at that the, the name that I gave it. Uh, sometimes it takes a little bit to to um, to replicate that there, but uh, you can see that basically what I did is I just came here and I looked at the at the diff at the different options that I have and I selected the. Uh, you see here that it already gave me the transaction type by quantity, so it just hasn't given it just hasn't replicated that name for that yet. So. I can select and I can give it a, a different name if I wanted to uh, for the for the portlet up here. Uh, so I'm just gonna say office hours uh, bills by type, uh, bill count. So you can give it that name and it's gonna update that here. It refreshes and it gives me that. So within the portlet itself, 
then I can change the, the chart type, which is something that I could do in the, in the chart itself here. I can change the chart type. I think that this has not been uh, fully saved. That's why I didn't do it. Uh, but I can change this, the chart type, but I can do it here as well uh, to a chart type that may make sense, right? So if I want to do a line chart, uh, then, you know, a line chart here. It's not selecting the line chart. Uh, maybe I want to do a bar chart this way. It's not helping. But this is where you would change your line, your chart type uh, if you wanted to change it here. I don't know why it's not, not working, but that's where, that's where you would do it. I apologize for that. Um, same thing you can do with your pivot table. So if I want to, my pivot table is called transaction time by quarter. So if I want to just change this to that, I can come here, set up, and select the pivot uh, pivot portlet, and add my transaction. Again, I can give it a name. How many rows I want visible? So I'm going to say, you know, 20 rows I want visible here, uh, and select that. It, it gave it the same uh, name that I had before, and it's going to show me my my pivot table here that I had in the workbook. Um, From here, if I was, if I wanted to, I'm going to close this workbook here. I could, you can see here that it, it allows you to open this in the workbook. If I want to, if I want to do more analysis and move things around, or add columns, or add, or remove features, or add filters, I can come to the workbook here and I can do all my changes, and it will be reflected back in the in the portal. So let me um, go back to my analytics dashboard a um, couple of things that you can do here as well so once you've created a workbook um, I'm going to look at my workbooks here just to filter out you can make them favorites so they're going to show here in your favorite workbooks it's like a shortcut there um, you can see them in in different you know different views you can see them as a list if you want to have more real estate in your in your uh, on the screen, um, and, uh, and and just like the data sheet, data sets, you can come here and you can share it, or you can delete it. Uh, so in this case, if I want to share, I know it's shared with these people. I can remove those, or I can add more people to to share the the workbook itself. Uh, if you're the owner, same thing as data sets, you can or administrator, you can change who the owner is. So that person has. You maybe want you may want to give somebody. Um, um, temporary rights to change the workbook uh, and save it without having to create a new one so that you would do it as an owner. You set them as an owner because that's the only way they, unless they're an administrator, analytics administrator role. Uh, and that's something that you want to be careful with. So you can do it temporarily here and you can see other, uh, you can change the description here as well and a script ID. Um, within, if I go back to my workbooks, if I do the uh, tabular view here. If I, once I, if I look at a specific workbook, um, again, within the workbook, you'll, um, you'll have the option of, if you click on this icon here, you can, you can edit the workbook name, you can edit the description, you can, you can see what elements it has. The custom workbook ID, I think is for an eventual scripting functionality. Uh, it's currently not available. But the idea is that you give it an ID, and you can give it a unique ID. So a best practice that we see for IDs, for fields, um, records, for any type you're creating a custom object is that you give it a, an ID, not the default number that NetSuite will give it. So here at Crow, what we do is that we say underscore C underscore, you know, office hours workbook, for example, uh, workbook. So that's the best practice to, to name any object that you're creating. It makes it easier for scripting so you know what the field is. Uh, it makes it easier for bundling things, et cetera. So you can, you can bundle it by things that make sense. So you, you may wanna consider that as you're creating additional fields in your account. We see a lot of just numbers there and it's not, not always uh, uh, the best. Uh, NetSuite uh, starts every record or every type with with a nomenclature so you have here is custom workbook um, so 
we you, you just we do the underscore to separate it from that customer. Okay. So now that you'll see that this is the official ID of this feed of this. And if you look at C workbook script IDs, you'll see the same things here. It, it gives everything a specific ID number that you can you can change as well. Um, let me go to to the questions there. There's a lot of questions in the in the uh, in the question and answer window and some of the questions that I uh, that we received previously. Um, so the first one was, how can we leverage the analytics tool to enhance reporting? Can I be used to scenario modeling? You can, you can, so we show you how to put it in your dashboard and enhance reporting. It really depends on what reports you want to see, how you build your data sets and your workbooks. Um, uh, just to emphasize, a workbook is always based on a specific data set. And then the data set is based on a record type. Uh, so you have to have that link and that sort of design of what you want to build. You can change the workbook as you are, or this data set as you are looking at the workbook. So in this case, I am the owner of both the data set and the workbook. So if I wanted to add more information to, to my data set, to my data set within the workbook, I can come here to the transaction data set and I can open the data set. And I can say, you know, I want to add, I'm just going to go simple and add abbreviation type. So I'm adding this, it's going to add it to the right of the, of the, of the um, table, of the table here. And I can apply it to workbook without, you know, saving the changes here. If I want to look, see what it looks like there before I commit to that, uh, or I can save it. And it will automatically pop, update the workbook. So if I apply it to the workbook, you'll see now abbreviation type is here. So now I added more data that I can add to my, to my workbook that I didn't have available before. Uh, it's not saved yet, so I'm still gonna have to save it, but I can, uh, I can do it from here without having to go to the, to the data set. I can discard the change or I can save the change. Once I've saved the change, the field is here, you know, and I can add it to my columns here very easily. And again, so uh, as far as scenario, scenario modeling, you can, you can do pivot tables and charts and see different scenarios of history. It won't help you for future uh, modeling, but it can help you to see how things looked in the, you know, in the past. Um, the second, uh, how can I deploy, deploy work to a dashboard? So you deploy the visualizations, pivot tables and charts. Uh, usually you won't deploy the tables itself here, uh, but you can deploy that and we show you that. Couple of things that you can do within the workbook. You can export the results of your table to Excel or CSV by clicking here, just like you could with the save search. Um, so that's that's uh, uh, good. On on a on a pivot table, um, uh, sorry, on on a chart, you can collapse. You know the the things that are not important when you're visualizing it, and you can print it. So you can print it to PDF or print it directly to a printer, or you can export this as an image if you want to post it to a specific presentation, just like you can with some reports, just a little bit, uh, I would say prettier, uh, more elegant. Um, next question is, what are the best practices for ad hoc and, uh, sorry, what would you be able to provide examples of the top five analytics used? Um, so the usage of analytics, I think is gonna be obvious, is based on, on what you need. NetSuite has provided uh, out of the box uh, or, or installed based on your version the, the these templates of workbooks, uh, but they don't have a lot of visualizations included in them. I think NetSuite will more and more in the future provide more visualizations out of the box, but uh, or add them to the templates. But right now they provide one or two. Uh, but I would say that these are the ones that they've considered the simplest and more important right now. Again, very based on your version. I have warehouse things here that you may not have, so you wouldn't have that template. Uh, but I would say that uh, you have the liberty to create whatever you want. So it's based on what you want to see and what data would drive decisions in your in your company. Um, next question: are Best practices for ad hoc and recurring analysis usages. So uh, again, best practice is create create reports that make sense to you that uh, make sure that people are not creating and being able to save reports because then you have too many too many workbooks out there and, and, and no, people are not looking at the same version of the data. Um, 
And as far as leverage ODBC, like I mentioned, you can use that uh, analytics browser to enhance your ODBC capabilities and, and connect that to uh, your, your data warehouses outside of Netsuite. Um, moving on to, to the questions in the Q&A, uh, do users still need edit if you were to publish analytics portals to their dashboard? So the permissions for student analytics workbooks are, there's only one permission, edit. So for them to be able to see them, uh, to be able to see this, you, they would need the, the edit permission to be able to publish into their dashboard. I don't think that they would need the permission at all. Uh, uh, I've not tried that to be honest, but you can easily check if you don't have the permission and you publish a dashboard, they will be able to, they should be able to see it. Uh, that's something that we can, we can definitely test and that's a good thing for me to go uh, check as homework. But there's no only view access permission for, for workbooks. Um, the next one, would you, what would our template section be empty? Um, so it may be that um, uh, some of these templates come with, with uh, Suite Analytics, with Suite Success versions of NetSuite. Um, if you are not on a Suite Success version of NetSuite, that means that you, know, you have the feature, but you don't have templates. The templates typically come with the, with the Suite Success edition. Uh, and you can message me offline if you want, but Suite Success is a newer offering with NetSuite and a lot of clients have been with Suite Success, sorry, with NetSuite prior to Suite Success is existing and there's no a clear path to migrate from an all non suite success edition to a Swift success edition. I would look to see if there are, I'm not sure of the answer to this, but I would look to see if there are sweet apps out there that are bundling workbooks. Again, I'm not 100% sure because there's, there may be compatibility issues based on what you have with NetSuite because you have to have the underlying records, uh, but that would be the reason why you can't see the templates in your, in your section of, of, of the workbook or the data sets. Best practices for naming data sets and workbooks. Um, I think the, the best practice to me is uh, just being consistent uh, and, and giving them, a, you know, if you want to do transaction uh, type, then you want to name it transaction underscore, whatever you want it to, be, to, to, to signify. Uh, uh, you can sort and you can, uh, you can sort this, but there's not a filtering mechanism yet. You can search. Uh, but there's not a filter in like other things where you could say, well, show me only things that say, you know, or things that are of type transaction or by the record type. So you would have to just name it something that'd be easily sortable and easily uh, searchable. Um, when you're naming the, the, the scripts, I talked about that doing the underscore and, and some sort of descriptive name. There is a limit to the fields that you have there or the, the size of the, disk of the ID. So you have to be sometimes use abbreviation and, and clever naming for that. Um, so the question is, do you have to create a data set or create a workbook off of that? Yeah, the order is you have to have a data set, you create the workbook of the data set, and then you create visualizations from the workbook. So the data set is always the underlying data. Well, the data set is the first point for to create a data set, then you use the record type. Uh, and the record type will pull in all the associated uh, records that are created. So for example, with safe searches, uh, to give an example, if you're creating a safe search of a transaction, uh, of a vendor bill, for example, you can pull in that safe search, you can pull data from the vendor record because the transact that vendor bill has the vendor as the as a field, and then you can go to the vendor record um, and pull information from the vendor record. But say let's say you wanted to pull information from a field that's in the vendor record. I don't know. Um, I'm gonna use terms. Let's say you have a descriptive uh, something descriptive on the terms list that you wanna pull, not only net 30, but something else, right? That you have on, on the accounting list of the terms. You couldn't do that with a safe search. With a with the workbook, you can you can say, show me the vendor from the, and then also show me 
the event, the, the term description from the transaction. So it, it has multiple, multiple levels of, of, of data you can pull in or multiple joints, the way Netflix calls it. If names and changes are filled in the portal, is that changing the actual workbook? No. Uh, what you're changing is the display uh, of what you see in the portlet. Uh, and like with everything that is in the dashboard, everything here is, is personalized. So if I change this bill count, it should not change it for somebody else. This is the way that I want it. And it's not changing the underlying, uh, uh, the underlying uh, workbook itself. You can see here that the underlying workbook still, that pivot table is still called transaction type by queue. And it's not changing. You can't change in a chart the title, but you can just change the name here. And the last question we have is, how do you export workbook and pivot? So you can export the, the pivot. Um, you can export the workbook. You can export the, the, the charts. You cannot export uh, the pivot itself. A um, couple, of, a couple of additional resources that I wanted to quickly show you in the last couple of minutes that we have is, you know, all this information is if you come to help here uh, and you open help, there's going to be under the table of contact, under student analytics, and 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 workbook. There's a lot of information on how to create workbooks. There's even a tutorial here that you can that you can find step by step to create your own workbook. There's a lot of information in Sweet Arts as, as well. Uh, you can, if you just type uh, Sweet Analytics Workbook, there's going to be hundreds of articles and videos uh, that, um, that you can reference to, um, to create that. There's 15 videos for that and how to use it. And if you have the learning pass, uh, then you have, within the learning pass, there's a, Sweden Analytics, um, how to create visualizations and queries, um, data sets and visualizations that has a, a pretty comprehensive user guide and exercise book as well that you can, that you can use. So um, if there is no additional questions, again, I wanna uh, thank you for uh, the, your attention today. I want to, uh, Encourage you to look at the recording later and share it with your colleagues. Uh, we will be having another webinar next week on a new application that we are launching called the Crow Data Analysis.